Hi, this is Risa, your stitch buddy. This video is a stitch along guide to Lorna Bateman's large garland of flowers print and pattern kit, which I've reviewed on my channel, the link of which is provided above and below. I'll be your stitch buddy throughout this process. You may stop and resume any time during the video and while you're working on your project. Let's get started. Uh, I've ironed the fabric and the first step is to tack the muslin to the silk fabric. I generally stitch around the four corners uh, and once through the center uh, in a simple running stitch and I leave the ends of the thread loose without a knot so that we can pull it out easier at the end. I've mounted the fabric on an 8 inch hoop. Now with ribbon embroidery you start with the background stitches, the stems and the fern stitch. Stems for the um, roses, wisteria and lavender. And I'm starting here with the ferns using fly stitch where you come out on one side, go in on the opposite side, bring the needle out in the center and then as you can see and then arrest it I'll go back into the fabric in the center of the fern come back out onto the left and back in on the opposite side on the right bring the needle out back in the center and continue in this way until you finish the fern. Now with the ribbon embroidery coming back to the size of the hoop, um, it's best to use uh, the size of a hoop that completely um, covers the design of the ribbon embroidery. So it might be a large hoop or a frame um, as it's difficult to move the hoop or the frame around. Uh, as it might interfere with the design and the stitches that you've already made. Now I'm doing stem stitch for the lavenders and uh, most of you already know how to do stem stitch and you can stitch along with me as I complete the lavender. Make sure you do stem stitch always in the same direction so you bring out the needle always on one side. In my case I'm bringing it out onto the left side of the thread. So all the stems, stems and ferns are done. So this is for the wisteria. I'm going to start with the pink woven roses as illustrated in the pictures here. As you can see, there are some bunches of roses. The ribbon stitch is similar to making the woven rose in thread embroidery. I'm starting a few here for the benefit of the beginners eager to embroider this pattern. First, we start by stitching five spokes with two strands of DMC pink floss or you can choose pearl thread, which is what I'm using. The kit suggests working with 107 and 283 4mm river silks. In silk ribbon embroidery, it's easier to work with shorter lengths of ribbon. So I generally measure out either 15 centimeters or the width of the hoop I'm working with as a general rule. 
and to remove the kinks in the ribbon I use a mini straightening iron. To thread the ribbon you need to cut it at a 45 degrees angle. Uh, this gives you a little bit of a tip that you can use to thread a 20mm chenille needle which is used for silk ribbon embroidery. You then arrest it by inserting the needle towards the tip and pulling the ribbon through. Now at the other end you can make a knot by folding the ribbon a little bit and inserting the needle through the ribbon again and pulling it through. This will create a nice knot that will get arrested when you pull the needle and ribbon through the fabric. Now let's start with weaving the ribbon through the spokes in order to get the woven rows. So you pull the ribbon through the center, go over the first spoke or under, and then in this case, I'm going over and then under the second spoke and then you go over the third and under the fourth so over the first under the second over the third under the fourth and over the fifth and you continue this way don't pull the ribbon too hard otherwise it loses its sort of natural shape Now to end off the woven rows, you don't weave it any longer through the spokes, you take a straight stitch and insert it just past one of the spokes, pull it gently and let the ribbon fall and fold naturally. Come, up, come back up halfway where you had gone in, pull the ribbon out and do the same thing. Twist the ribbon a little bit um, because it gives it a nice natural sort of petal look and go past the spoke and insert a straight stitch into the fabric. Again, pull the needle somewhere close to the center of the last stitch. Twist it a bit and insert it past the next spoke. So you continue doing this until you're satisfied and you can end off the rows. To end off a ribbon, you insert the needle between the muslin backing and the fabric and cut the ribbon out, leaving a bit of a tail. And you stitch that tail with um, some white floss onto the muslin without piercing the main fabric in the front. Let's move on to the pretty purple lavenders around the garland. Very simple way to do this is to have a straight stitch with the ribbon, pull it through the center at the stem and insert it a bit at an angle into the fabric. Pull the ribbon taut so that it pulls nice and tight along the fabric and continue doing this until you've completed the lavenders in the pattern.
Next, I'll embroider the purple wisterias with French knots. The kit suggests using two shades of purple, and I usually keep my ribbons threaded and ready in multiple ne needles to save time. I'll start with the lighter shade and um, start with first one loop to create the French knot at the tip of the wisteria. And then gradually add two loops to the French knot as I reach the base of the wisteria to give it a little bit more profile. As you reach the base, um, start scattering the lighter shade of the ribbon with two loops of French knots. And then later on, you can bring in the darker shade of purple ribbon in between. Here I'm bringing in the darker shade of purple ribbon and starting off directly with two loops around the needle to create the French knot. Continue in this manner until you finish all of the wisterias in the pattern. I've finished the wisterias and have started on the daffodils in yellow ribbon. To embroider the daffodils, you first start with the trumpet using a simple ribbon stitch or inverted stitch and then the four petals spanning out on top. I start with a ribbon stitch in the center by bringing the ribbon out and then inserting the needle at where I want the tip to be. In order to have a nice trumpet shape, I put a pin at the tip of the ribbon and pull gently so the tip gets a square shape. Without removing the pin, uh, I bring the ribbon back up at the center. This is to avoid the rounded tip from being pulled through. For the second petal, I insert the needle a bit to the side of the ribbon so that it opens up over the first petal that was stitched. If you haven't already seen my review of this kit and Lorna's two other kits, then click on the link above to access that video.
Now I'll start with the four petals that span out on the top with simple ribbon stitches. I will use red and magenta ribbons for the twist and twirl roses and some matching floss. You'll need to take out one strand from each of the two matching floss and um, thread the needle and keep it ready to arrest the rose when you've completed the stitch. It's easier to work with a much shorter length of ribbon when doing this stitch and I'm going to cut out 10 centimeters up to 11 centimeters as per the instructions and cut out a few multiple pieces to keep them ready and threaded. So let's start with the twist and twirl. You come in at the center with the ribbon and also bring the arresting floss through the center and keep that ready and attached to the muslin so that you can use it when needed. Now you take the ribbon and twirl it around until you get a nice smooth tube without any kinks. As you can see. And once that's done, you reinsert the needle about a millimeter away from the center and pull it through the cloth and let the ribbon pieces naturally twirl. Then you pull the ribbon through the fabric slowly and gently and as you pull through you'll see that a little rosebud is formed. Once you're happy with how the rosebud looks like you can take the floss that has been attached and arrest the rose at the center. So you take one stitch in and then come back out through the middle holding the ribbon down so that it doesn't unravel. Once you pull it through you go back in at the center and this arrests the little rose that has been formed. You may want to do this about a couple of times to arrest the rose until you feel it's secure enough. And there you have a pretty little rose.
So I've finished the twist and twirl roses in red and in deep purple. And um, now we're gonna go over the columbine flowers, which um, I have initially completed three of them and we need to do three more. Columbine flowers are embroidered with a combination of bullion lazy daisies and looped daisy silk ribbon stitches. So in order to do a bullion lazy daisy, you first start like you would for a chain stitch. Come out at the center, go a bit about a millimeter away from the center, bring the needle out back through the fabric and with uh, a simple chain stitch you would uh, end it there but with the bullion lazy daisy you loop three rounds of the ribbon flat around the needle and try to keep the ribbon flat once done you put some pressure on the needle and pull through the ribbon and there you have it you have a, you have a bullion lazy daisy which you then insert back or twist around a little bit to your liking and insert back into the fabric Now we start with the loop daisy in the center by using the light pink ribbon. You bring out the ribbon in the center and place the ribbon against the fabric. Now you're going to loop the ribbon over and in order to keep the loop, you will need to arrest it with a pin so what I do is I insert the pin slightly into the fabric and then bring it out without piercing the ribbon and going over the ribbon that, was, that is laying flat on the fabric and then I loop the ribbon over it and then insert the needle through both the ribbon that's under it and the one over it. So you kind of arrest both ribbons in place. And once you do that, you leave that pin while you start the second petal. So again, you flatten the ribbon, you arrest it with a pin, you loop the ribbon over the pin, and then arrest both the rib bottom and top ribbon just at the bottom where you came in. And remember not to take out the pin when you're doing this or when you start the next petal. And there we have it. Now at the center you um, do a loose French knot with three loops around the needle and then you pull it through and you get a pretty little columbine flower. Don't pull the, th the ribbon so tight as with the forget-me-nots, the blue forget-me-nots that you see. 
on the pattern. Moving on to the foxgloves, Lorna suggests using plume ribbon stitch, uh, overlapping ribbon stitches or loop daisy stitches to create these flowers. I've decided to uh, embroider it using plume ribbon stitch. So you first come out with the light pink ribbon at the top of the flower. You loop it over and about a millimeter, two millimeters down you enter the fabric from uh, essentially two millimeters from where you came up onto the fabric and you make sure that the ribbons are straight and not kinked so you pull it across and once it's through you see you have a little loop there now you come back up through the ribbon about two millimeters above the second stitch so this kind of arrests the first petal of the foxglove you pull it out once it's nice and out you straighten the ribbon and now you create these little loops on either side of the stem uh, that was already stitched. So I find that plume stitch takes a little bit of practice um, and a lot of patience. So here now with the second petal, I'm entering the fabric about two millimeters below and pulling the ribbon through making sure that it's straight so this part of it can get a bit frustrating uh, so you pull it through gently you have a little loop there you can pull the ribbon to adjust the size of the loop which i'm doing currently and then you bring the ribbon back up two millimeters up from where you went into the fabric. And now on the other side, same thing, you loop the ribbon, hold it down, straighten, straighten the ribbon. As you can see, it can be a bit of a challenge, especially if you want it to look a certain way. So you have to keep adjusting it. Uh, but the final look is really very pretty. So here I'm sort of trying it multiple times. Can get a bit frustrating. Um, back in the fabric. And then sort of making sure I adjust the ribbon so that it's straight. I love it when the ribbon just falls naturally the way you want it to. Um, and it's frustrating when it doesn't. So there, let me pull that out a little bit, adjust it so there, the two sort of ribbon sleeves are above each other. 
and bring the ribbon, the needle back up. So you continue this way until you get to the end of the stem and then you can start the other branch again from the top. Next up are the pretty daisies. I've finished three here and we'll do two additional ones here. So Lorna has given a few options in her instructions on how to do the daisies. Um, and one of them is just a simple ribbon stitch. And that's what I'm going to do. You use a simple ribbon stitch and stitch five spokes and then in between five more spokes to give it a more fuller look as you can see here. It's a really simple but very, very pretty ribbon stitch uh, for daisies. And to finish off, we take a yellow ribbon and insert it in the center and create a French knot. So I do two loops and insert it back in the center. I've used a, a deeper yellow ribbon compared to the ones that we used for the daffodils, which was a variated yellow ribbon. Let's move on to the full blown rose. I've finished two already and the daisies are completed so I'll show you how to embroider a full-blown rose. Essentially it's a simple ribbon stitch however this time around you give it a little bit of a loft so normally you would flatten the ribbon but for a full-blown rose give it a bit of a loft and then insert your needle in the center of the ribbon. And by the way, this is a 7mm ribbon, so you can see it's a little wider. Now, you would want a nice square tip for a full blown rose. So, as with the Columbine, insert a pin to hold the ribbon in place and then straighten the ribbon so we have a nice square straight tip and then pull the ribbon through. Now this one hasn't come out just as the way I want it but never mind that's what happens with ribbon embroidery. 
you don't quite always get it right. Anyway, let's give it another try. Leave the pin in place so the ribbon doesn't get pulled through. And now let's try it again. Straighten the ribbon before you insert it. A lot of times I'm just lazy to straighten it and then I don't get the nice square tip that I want. But now I've paid a little bit more attention and you can see a nice square straight tip has been created. So that's exactly how a full blown rose should look like. Now to stitch the bead in the center of the full blown rose, you take a white floss, pull it through the center, pick up a bead from your bead holder if you have one, um, and then insert the needle back in the center. I find bead holders really useful uh, so you don't have to you know, chase around the bead around the table or a bag. So all the flowers have been completed. It looks absolutely adorable. I loved the mix of colors that uh, the design uses. Go, and go ahead and finish the, um, the buds for the roses, and then you can start uh, with the leaves. Fantastic, you've made it to the last bit of the embroidery piece, and that is embroidering the leaves. So I have three different shades of green that I'm gonna use. Um, and I'm going to alternate them uh, with the flowers. So I'm going to start with the light green ribbon to embroider the leaves for the wisteria. Now leaves are really simple to do. You just need simple ribbon stitches mainly. And in some cases you may use a chain stitch, especially around the buds of um, roses. Uh, but, it, but most of the time, I've used only ribbon stitch here and I've alternated between the light green ribbons and the dark green ribbons. And you can use your artistic imagination here to finish off this beautiful garland of flowers designed by Lorna Bateman. Definitely visit Etsy if you haven't bought this kit already. Um, I certainly recommend this kit. Um, and others from her shop.
Congratulations, you've finished the piece together with me. Isn't it beautiful? Now you can frame it or convert it into a vintage cushion like I did. Check it out. If you want to convert this embroidery piece or any other into a vintage cushion, click on the link above to watch the video on how to do that. Thank you for joining me on this stitch along journey and don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. See you again next time. Bye bye.